Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and if you recall a couple of days ago, we took a look at the new Steam Link from Valve. This is a $50 device uh, that will stream games from your home gaming PC to a television in another room. It's a very convenient way of getting uh, PC quality graphics on the big screen without uh, having to drag your whole PC tower down to your living room, which my wife uh, pretty much vetoed as an option in my home. So a little device like this makes life a lot easier. But a lot of people wrote in uh, very confused about how all this works and exactly what it does. So I figured I would do a overview in this video talking in a very simple way about what in-home game streaming is and how it works. And there's a couple different ways uh, to stream games from different manufacturers. So Steam uh, is one way, it's probably the most popular in-home game streaming protocol. So we're gonna be talking a lot about how this works Works, but everything you're going to see related to the Steam Link is actually applicable to other things too. So the NVIDIA Shield TV that we've done a lot with, uh, that does in-home game streaming from a game PC. Uh, the Xbox One will also stream its games to a Windows 10 PC uh, in your home much in the same way. So the concepts here apply across all of these different devices, but uh, we're going to just focus on Steam today because that seems to be where I got a bulk of the questions from. So let's take a look and uh, get to the bottom of what in-home game streaming is all about. Now the first thing you need to know is that uh, streaming clients are dumb, whether they're running on a computer or running on uh, the little Steam Link box here. Uh, they don't do anything but rely on what the host PC does. So if your host PC is slow, uh, the games on your television streaming from that host PC are also going to be slow. These things do not uh, speed up your life at all. In fact, uh, what we're doing right now is we've got the Steam Link connected to my gaming PC. The screen on the left is the gaming PC. Uh, the screen on the right is the Steam Link. And you can see here, uh, the gaming PC is actually generating all of the uh, video that's being pushed over to my uh, little Steam Link box here. So it really doesn't do anything, especially in the case of the Steam Link. Uh, it doesn't do anything else. It's all it does is it looks for a gaming PC to connect to, to grab its video and audio, and that's it. It doesn't have any apps. You can't put Netflix on it. You can't watch movies on it. Uh, it is strictly looking for a gaming PC to connect to running Steam, and that is all it does. The NVIDIA Shield TV does a little bit more, but when it's in this mode, uh, that's it. It is completely reliant on the host PC to get its stuff done. So it brings your PC games to a second screen relatively easily though, uh, but again, you're really tied uh, into what that host PC is all about. So what we're gonna be doing in a minute uh, is streaming uh, Grand Theft Auto V from my gaming PC over to this television. And even though we're in the same room, uh, I could be across the house actually, and I've done this quite a bit in this house, uh, so it really doesn't matter you know, where you are in your home as long as you have a network connection between those two points, uh, you can bring uh, that game over to your bigger television. And that's what we're going to be taking a look at here. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna load up uh, Grand Theft Auto V on our PC. I've got my Steam link connected to the network via a y uh, ethernet cable. Uh, Wi-Fi is not really recommended in this uh, setup. I'm gonna talk more about the differences between ethernet and Wi-Fi in a few minutes, but if you're able to hardwire everything into your router, for example, that is the ideal way to make all of this work, although wireless can work, uh, but not as reliably. Uh, so what happens in this scenario is that uh, the host PC is going to send its video image to our Steam Link, and then uh, the game controller is plugged into the Steam Link. In this case, we're using uh, one of the new Steam controllers connecting wirelessly to my Link. Uh, but basically, it's gonna take all of the game controller input, uh, fire that stuff back to the host PC, and that is how we're going to play the game. So it's pretty uh, simple in that regard in that you're pushing data one way for video and audio from the game, and then this device is getting the controller input, shooting it back to the PC, and it happens so fast that it's able to do it uh, with very minimal latency, which is pretty impressive. So what we're gonna do now uh, is go ahead and load up uh, Grand Theft Auto V here. So I'm gonna push the button uh, on my uh, controller here, and you're gonna see what's gonna happen on the left here with my gaming PC once I initiate that. So I'm gonna uh, just launch it here, and this will take a second, so we'll probably do a little jump cut while we're waiting. All right, so it took a minute to get everything loaded up, but now that the game is operating here, you can see that we are streaming from the host PC on the left uh, to my television here on the right, and everything seems to be working just fine. So uh, you get a feel for how all of this in-home game streaming is now working. So what's going on right this second uh, is that there is a lot of data being transferred between uh, this little box here uh, and my gaming PC over there. So again, what's happening is the gaming PC is sending uh, all of that video from the game over to the box. The box is listening for the game controller and sending back that controller data all in real time. So it's a lot going on right here, uh, but as you can see, it really does uh, work well, especially when you're on uh, a wired connection and it looks pretty nice too. So uh, not as good perhaps as sitting in front of your uh, PC screen, but uh, if you're across a 
room, you're really not going to notice much of a difference here. So a lot of things going on, uh, but it is working really, really well. Now, again, I want to reiterate that uh, the performance of this depends on your host PC. So if I had a slower PC, it would be just as slow uh, on my television uh, as it is uh, on my regular computer screen. So it's really not going to give you any performance boosts at all. In fact, in some cases, it might actually uh, degrade your performance a little bit. So the kind of computer that is best suited for this is uh, one with a quad core processor. An i7 processor is always the best one to look at. A lot of the NVIDIA GPUs, I think from like the 650 series up, uh, have uh, built-in video encoders for this very task. So actually what's really happening here is that uh, the video from this game uh, is being encoded in a very similar way to what streaming video might be over the web. However, uh, everything is in real time. There's no buffering going on here so that if it has a little glitch, uh, there's nothing to prevent the video from stopping at that point because everything has to be real time. It needs to take the controller input the minute I make it. So uh, again, there's a lot of data going back and forth and the quality of the connection uh, is really, really important when you're doing this. Uh, the host PC cannot do other things while it is streaming. That was one thing that a lot of other people uh, had asked about also was whether or not uh, they could play two games at one time. You can't. Uh, what happens is, is that when you load that game up, it is running on your host PC. As you can see, if I was, uh, if, you know, we got the monitor here from the host PC is displaying the same exact image. Uh, Steam will uh, kill the audio so your speakers aren't going off when, uh, when the game is running, but you can also have it play the audio back through the speakers on the host computer in addition to uh, going to the television set here too. But uh, you are not going to be able to do anything else with your PC. Again, it's not going to add anything new to your computer. It's just a way of getting a uh, display off your host computer uh, over to another device in the house. So keep that in mind too. And I want to talk about Ethernet because uh, what I've got here is this green cable plugged in, which is an Ethernet cable uh, that is connected back to uh, my rest of the, the rest of my network, which is uh, giving me a much more reliable connection. And here's, here's why uh, Ethernet is better and preferred. So what happens here is that uh, we are sending a lot of data over to that little device there, and it has to get there in real time. Again, no buffering going on. So when you're in a wireless environment, uh, wireless really kind of shares its bandwidth with everything else in the house. So if you just had uh, your host computer and your streaming device, it might be okay because there's not a lot of other things interfering with that connection. Uh, but the second somebody else in the house gets on with their iPhone or their iPad or one of their uh, tablets or computers, uh, you're all sharing that same space. And if people are all transmitting data at the same time, you can get collisions and uh, what happens is the data has to be resent. However, the nature of how streaming works is that because everything has to arrive in real time, uh, there's no real leeway for having to resend a data packet when it gets uh, collided with something else over a radio signal. So uh, you lose the data and your game will lag or uh, it might just cut out completely for a second or two and then come back. So uh, if you take a look at a video I just did on the Kangaroo PC where we did some wireless game streaming, you'll see an example of how it, and I'll put a link up to that exact spot in the video above, uh, how it just kind of stops for a second because uh, you're having that issue with uh, a network uh, interference occurring and uh, it has to then wait for the, uh, the data to come back in again to start up once more. And in a game, especially an action game like this, uh, you don't have that kind of leeway. So uh, that is something that happens when you are on Wi-Fi. You're all on the same road together. Uh, when you're using Ethernet, especially with most modern switches, and by the way, even some of the cheaper routers are actually Ethernet switches. And the way these work is that there's an, a separate road uh, for every port on that switch. So uh, when I'm communicating via uh, these two devices right here, there's other devices on the switches, but the switch is actually making it more of a one-to-one -one connection between my device. So everything up and down the wire that uh, this Steam Link is connected to is exclusive to it. It is not sharing its bandwidth uh, really with anyone on uh, the network. So if my other computer that is plugged into that same switch is uh, talking to my router downstairs, it's not interfering with uh, what the uh, Steam Link is doing right now. And that's why it is so much better uh, to have that. So that is kind of in-home game streaming in a nutshell. I hope I kind of explained exactly what it is and what it isn't and why uh, using Ethernet is more important. But it really works great. It's a lot more convenient, again, than hooking your computer up to your television. But if all this seems like too much, then that's probably the easiest way to go. And if you've never thought about doing that before, it actually works very well because most HD televisions will work uh, just by plugging that HDMI cable in from your computer uh, into that TV and your game is up on the big screen and it looks great. Uh, we saw how that worked with that Alienware Steam Machine we uh, reviewed the other day. So just plug the HDMI in and you're good to go. Uh, or you can buy something like this or use the NVIDIA Shield TV uh, or even just stream it to a computer because uh, most Steam uh, clients or all Steam clients on a computer will allow you to stream from another PC 
uh, that's within your home network. So let me know what you thought of this video. I hope it was helpful and instructive to you in explaining exactly what in-home game streaming is. And I'm going to go back to playing some Grand Theft Auto. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the generosity of my Patreon supporters. If you find the channel helpful, you too can contribute for as little as a dollar a month. Visit lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more.